Shadowlands is going to launch with about 80 plus mounts for you to obtain. Some of these you're going to be able to get within the first day or two of hitting max level. The others are going to be a big grind. So what I wanted to do in this video was run through the kind of easy amounts you can pick up, the quick amounts you're going to be able to pick up, and I'm going to be ordering them roughly in the time it'll take you to get them. So the easy ones that you'll be able to pick up within a few hours, to the ones that will take a few hours, maybe spread across a few days. This video is sponsored by HyperX. Ensure you're prepared and equipped for the Shadowlands with their Pulsefire Raid Gaming Mouse. This is an 11 button mouse that will make you utilizing your new Covenant abilities or your unpruned class spells a breeze while keeping the mouse lightweight. It isn't going to be one of those big bulky multi-button mouses. Or you could truly support your Covenant with the customizable RGB lighting with HyperX Ingenuita. However, preparing to climb the infinite floors of Torghast will push you and your character to its limits, and you'll need a keyboard to keep up with you, and that keyboard is the Alloy Elite 2. This is a mechanical red linear switch keyboard that'll put full control at your fingertips. These mechanical switches are balanced for speed and responsiveness, and have translucent HyperX pudding keycaps to match your RGB setup with your Pulsefire Raid mouse. But to take on the first raid of the expansion, Castle Nathria, you're going to need more. You're going to need a raid team, and with a raid team you'll need communication. To ensure you've got crystal clear voice comms, you'll need the HyperX Quadcast. This is an all-inclusive standalone USB condenser mic, that comes with its own built-in anti-vibration shock mount that'll help reduce the rumble of your intense button mashing. So, if you're interested in any of these products, find them in the links in the description below. Player skill not included. Our first stop is going to be in Ardenweald, and this is going to be the place where you're going to pick up the most easy mounts. For some reason, it's just cram-packed with them. And the first mount up is going to be the Wild Seed Cradle. You'll get this within less than half an hour. It's very quick to get and it's going to require you to loot five items. These items don't have a respawn timer. It doesn't matter if other people are there, you'll just be able to run around, grab them, and then turn them in for a mount, essentially. So the five items can be found within the Garden of Night, and the first item up will be the Gardener's Basket you'll find next to kind of this well. The next will be the Gardener's Hammer you'll find in this broken cart. Then you'll want to head up to the upper section of this area, and you follow the path across. On a bench, you'll find a book. You'll loot the Diary of the Night. You'll jump down, you'll find some mobs, and then next to these seeds, you'll find the gardener's flute. And then you'll head a bit further down, and you'll find another broken cart. Underneath the cart will be the gardener's wand. Once you've got all five, you'll right-click one of them, and it'll turn into Twinkle Star's gardening toolkit. We'll head over to Turnaval, and there we'll find Twinkle Star. You'll be able to give them back the toolkit. They'll give you a buff, and then behind them will be a chest. And inside the chest will be the wild seed cradle. The next mount up is going to be the Shimmer Mist Runner, and once again you should be able to get this in less than half an hour, but the mob that this is attached to does have a respawn timer, so if someone killed it recently, you could be waiting for around an hour to two hours for it to respawn again. So what we'll do for this, we'll head over to Turn a Sith, and where I'm showing you now will be the start of a maze. You need to navigate through this maze to get to a mob called Shizgir. If you try to get to Shizgir incorrectly, you follow the maze wrong, then he'll phase out and you won't be able to attack him. So we need to follow the maze correctly, so from the starting point we'll take a left, we'll follow these blue lanterns basically. You'll find a mushroom here, you'll want to jump on that and that will give you reduced aggro radius. Then you'll take your first right, then you'll follow this path and go left, you'll take the next right, then you'll have three choices, you'll take the far right option, the, the third option, and then we'll have three more options, you'll take the middle option, and that will lead you into where Shizgir is. Now this rare or this elite is going to be quite difficult to fight, especially early on in the expansion, but there's no reason to not bring some other people with you. Just get a small group of people, head in there, complete the maze, kill Shizgir, and then click the Dream Runner that's been captured, and you will get yourself the Shimmer Mist Runner on a 100% drop chance. The next mount up is going to be the Arboreal Gulpa, which you should be able to get within less than two hours, but it is RNG, so it could be taking you a little bit longer, but I've grinded in this zone a ton, and I haven't gone more than two hours without finding the item that we need. So the way this works is you'll need an item called the Unusually Large Mushroom, and I've had this drop mainly from these two places, but this, these are the two places I've spent the most time grinding mobs in the zone, so it probably can drop from other places, but as I said, these are the places that I've grinded the most. And one of these areas is going to be useful for a different mount a little bit later on, so you can kind of double dip as well, and we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Once you get your Unusually Large Mushroom, it will have a 20 minute duration, and what you'll need to do is take it to the spot I'm showing you now, You'll head over there, you'll be able to use it on this soil patch, and it will spawn a rare called Humongos. You'll kill Humongos, and everyone who takes part in the fight will get themselves the Arboreal Gulpa on a 100% drop chance. 
Now the dirt patch or the mob or whatever has a very short respawn timer. So unless you get there very late, like you've only got two minutes left on the mushroom, then you should have no reason for the mushroom to expire. If you head there as soon as you get the mushroom drop, you'll have plenty of time for it to respawn and you'll get yourself the mount. In terms of the fight itself, it's going to be quite difficult for a solo player to kill this early on with low eye level. But once again, there's no reason to not grab some other people in the zone and kill this off real quick. You can solo this as a pet class of specialer, but as I said, there's no reason to not grab a couple of people, kill it, and then everyone in the group will get themselves the mount. We're still in Ardenweald for the next mount, and that is going to be the Swift Gloomhoof. Although this does require a Night Fae Covenant aligned character to get the mount, but once you do get it, it'll be usable by all of your characters on the, all the various covenants. And this should take way less than an hour, two hours. It's very quick to do. You just may have some questing to do as well, which may add some length onto this. So the way this works, you're going to need, first of all, the Broken Soul Web, which we'll find in Turner Sith, but it's on a platform that's not normally accessible. So to get there, you'll need to make use of class abilities or something like that. But what we use is Goblin Glider Kits because that's just the most convenient to use. You'll head to where I'm showing you now and you'll use the Goblin Glider Kit to get onto this tree. You'll follow the tree up and it'll curl to the left and you'll be able to see a kind of circular platform. Wait for Goblin Glider again, fly over to that platform and you'll find a broken car on the right. Head over to that broken car and behind it will be the broken soul web that you can loot. Next up, you'll need to get the broken soul web repaired. And for that, you'll need an NPC called Elder Gwenna. Now to get Elder Gwenna though, you need to have completed some side quest chains. The first one will take place in Glitterfall Basin, and this will be with an NPC called Lady of the Falls. They'll give you a quest chain called Trouble in the Banks. You'll go and complete all of that, and I'll be showing you the various quests that you need now. You'll complete that quest chain, you'll hand that in, and then you'll get another quest from the same NPC called Ages Equin Wisdom. And part of this quest chain will be to aid Elder Gwenna, and once again, I'll have the quest that you'll need on the screen now. Once that's all done, Elder Gwenna will now be in Glitterfall Basin. You'll be able to speak to them. You'll need to dismount because it's kind of bugger and you'll trade them 10 lightless silk, and they will repair the broken soul web into a repaired soul web. The final step is to take this to Ysera within the heart of the forest, and this is the part that needs Night Fae only. You'll head inside there, you'll speak to them, and they will then repair the repaired soul web and turn it into a dream catcher. Once you've got the dream catcher, you'll then head to Hibernal Hollow, and on the right side, you'll find Nightmare kind of running around, but you won't be able to kind of see it properly, and you won't be able to attack it. But using the dream catcher will give you a five minute buff which will allow you to now see and attack nightmare now this is going to be a quite difficult fight for someone low geared so once again i would recommend bringing people with you for this but they will all need to be night fae as well if they're going to help you and they will also need to follow these steps as well otherwise they won't be able to enter this kind of alternate phasing and fight nightmare so get them with you and get them to follow all of these steps once you've all done that, you can head and fight Nightmare, and everyone who takes part in the fight will get themselves the mount on a 100% drop chance. And a few things to note from the fight, it'll do a cast that you can interrupt, it'll do a cast that's a big circle around itself that you'll need to move away from, and it'll just randomly charge some people. You do need to make sure you're keeping your Dream Catcher buff up as well, because if that does expire, you're going to be kicked out of the phasing. But you can use this while in combat, so there's no reason to keep it up. But wait, there's more mounts in Ardenweald. The next one up is going to be the Spine Maw Glade Chewer. And this is a 100% drop chance mount from a rare spawn called Gorm Tamer Tizo. But to get Tizo to spawn, it's going to have some kind of criteria to it. You need to kill mobs, and then those mobs have a chance of procking its spawn. And this may take you a few hours. I've had this spawn four times so far, and the longest it took me was seven hours. So sometimes you could get it really quick. Some people are going to take quite a while. But I'd imagine early on in the expansion, there's going to be a bunch of people in this area anyway, killing the mobs, and they're just going to help it spawn faster. So the way this works is you're going to head over to Turner Sif, and you're going to kill these Bristlecone Spriggans. Now, previously, it was thought that only the elite ones riding the deranged guardians could proc the rare. But very recently, I had one proc from a normal mob. It was while I was fighting an elite, so I'm not too sure if that was some weird outlier. But I would just murder everything in the area anyway because you don't really have any reason not to. And we can double dip. If you head here to farm for your unusually large mushroom, you can be trying to get the proc for the rare and your mushroom at the same time. So you are double dipping. And these mobs have a good chance for mats as well because the humanoids are going to be giving you cloth and stuff. So you'll keep killing these until you eventually get them, one of them to yell. They'll yell for Tizo's help. He'll spawn and you'll be able to kill him and get yourself the mount. This is quite easy, or at least easier than a lot of the rest solo. But once again, there's no reason to not call for some help if there are people nearby. 
just to make the fight a little bit easier for yourself, but definitely one of the easier rares to solo. The next mount up is going to be Sinran and Blanche, and this will take, if you're on the unlucky end of things, about 12 hours, but most of you are going to get this done in about 4, but, you know, give you that high end just in case. So, the way this works is Sinran and Blanche will spawn every 1-2 to two hours, it'll stick around for about 5 minutes, and you'll need to interact with it and give it what it wants for the day. The things that it wants are all preset in a preset order, you'll need to feed it for 6 days, or interact with it for 6 days and give it what it wants, and then on the 6th day you will get yourself the mount. It doesn't have to be 6 days in a row though, just 6 days total. Very similar to how the Spring for Alpaca worked, if people are familiar with that. So first of all, I'll, ro I'll run through the 6 items you're going to need. First of all, we'll need 8 handful of oats, which we'll find in Westfall in Eastern Kingdoms, around the fields. You'll grab 8 of those, and you're good. Then you'll be able to pick up the grooming brush from Snickersnee in Dark Haven. You'll just head there, speak to him, and he'll give you the grooming bush. Then you'll need to pick up these sturdy horseshoes, which we'll find around the roads. Uh, they're kind of on the right side of the map. Run around the roads, you'll find them. There's tons of them, and they don't take very long to respawn either. Then you'll need a bucket of clean water, which, first of all, you'll need the empty bucket near Snickersnee. That's kind of to his left. You'll take that to Ardenweald Wheel Bastion and fill it up. Then you'll need the comfortable saddle blanket, which you'll pick up from an NPC called Tatru in the south end of Revendreth. And what it wants for the blanket will change every week. It could want herbs, it could want meats. So you're just going to have to figure out what it wants for the week and then provide it. But it should be fairly cheap to pick up. And then the final item will be three Dread Hello Apples, which we'll pick up from an NPC called Mims. And they're on the kind of left side of the zone in the hole in the wall. You can get all of these items day one if you wish to, or you can get them on the days that you need them. But you can have them all in your bag ready, and that's what I would recommend. After you're done with that, you're going to head to the Endmire, and there's going to be this kind of like lake area, a little like river I should say, and this is where Cinderella Blanche will spawn and it will begin running, and when it collides with someone it will stop and you're able to interact with it. So what people will be doing is sat pretty much where it's going to spawn, so when it spawns it will instantly stop and they'll be able to interact with it. And anyone can interact with it for that 5 minute period that it's there before it despawns again, doesn't matter if you stopped it or not. So the best approach is going to be to head to the Endmire with the items prepared, and then just look for groups that say, hey I've got Blanche up, come and do whatever you need to do. You'll join their realm, you'll feed it or groom it or whatever it is for the task for the day, as long as you've got the items in your bag you're fine. You'll do that and then do that for 6 days and you'll get yourself the mount. The next mount up is going to be the Silverwind Larian, which I really like by the way. And this mount is going to be open to any covenant and you'll find this within Bastion. The way this is going to work is you need to go around the zone and collect 50 of these crystals. They're all hidden across Bastion and some of them are in the dungeons attached to Bastion as well. So you will need to do a little bit of dungeoning. And depending on how quick you are at getting around will depend on how long this is going to take. But it is going to take you a few hours regardless. So I'm not going to go through every single crystal location in this video because that would take a very long time. But what I will do is link in the description down below to the waypoints or to a, a wowhead post that will link you to the waypoints. You'll get an add-on called TomTom, Tom, you'll get an add-on called Paste, you'll copy all the waypoints, you'll put them into Paste, and those will be added to TomTom, Tom, and you'll get a little arrow that will show you where to go. So that's going to help you a, a, an absolute ton. You'll follow that around and you'll get all of the different crystals. Some are going to be hard to find those, so you are going to have to start thinking about them being slightly hidden. And if you have a Venthyr character, definitely would recommend doing it on that because that's going to make your life easier with the kind of teleport that they have as their base ability. It's really nice for this. So if you have got a Venthyr, I would recommend doing that. Otherwise, you may need some gliders or some other abilities along those lines to get you to some of the various places. And the crystals are account shared, so once you pick up one in one spot, it won't be there on your other characters anymore. And currently you do need to be level 60 to be able to pick these crystals up, so unfortunately you're not going to be able to get them while you're leveling. But you'll run around the zone, you'll collect all of them. Once you've got all of them, you'll take these to this forge light, which I'll be showing you now. You'll speak to them and they'll forge you the crystal mallet of the heralds. Once you've got that in hand, or in your bag, then you'll take that to the Vespa of the Silverwind. You'll ring the bell, the Vespa. And the little Silverwind Larion will fly down, he'll give you a box, and inside that box will be the mount on a 100% drop chance. So that's going to be the much easier mounts out the way, but there are a few others I wanted to mention quickly, just in case you kind of consider these easier, or you'd like to add them to your to-do list. The first one's going to be the Silky Shimmer Moth, which requires you to take part in seven of these different rare opera fights. But for the opera fights to spawn, you will need a player who's a Night Fae, and they'll need the tier 1 Anima Conductor, and they'll need to funnel Anima to the Dream Song Fen. 
You don't need to be a Night Fae to get this mount, you just will need the assistance of someone who's a Night Fae. Once they've done that, a rare will spawn, or they'll be able to spawn a rare at least. You'll kill it, and then once you've killed seven different ones, which could take seven days, could take more, because it is RNG, which fight you'll get, there'll be an NPC in this area that will sell you the Silky Shimmer Moth for 5,000 anima, which is going to be quite a bit of anima, but eventually you're going to buy most of the things that you want, and you'll have leftover anima, so you'll just be able to pick this up. So it is something that's worth unlocking earlier, and then when you've got the spare anima, you can buy it. The next one I want to talk about is also in Ardenweald, and that is going to be taking part in the various anima conductor related events and fights and stuff within Ardenweald. For non Night Fae players, this will be two things, and for Night Fae players, I think it'll be five. And what you'll be able to do is take part in the anima conductor stuff. So for non Night Fae, that would be the opera event we were just talking about, and another rare in Turner Sith called Valfir the Unrelenting. Killing these will give you 500 reputation towards a faction called Court of Night. Getting this up to Revered will allow you to purchase the Umbral Scythorn, and if you're a Night Fae, you'll also be able to purchase the Winterborn Rune Stag, and Night Fae players will gain this reputation faster. So just heading out there and doing these fights every day, which will take you like 10-15 minutes, will be giving you about 1000 rep or more if you're a Night Fae, and you'll eventually gain the reputation needed for Revered, and then you'll be able to purchase the mount for Anima, so I don't think it's that difficult of a mount to pick up, something you should be able to get within the first month-ish. The next thing I wanted to touch on is the Adventurer system, which is the new mission table. And this has a chance of giving you four different mounts, the Chattering Anamite, the Dark Warren Hardshell, the Highwind Dark Mane, and the War Stitch Dark Hound. And this is something you'll need to unlock through your Sanctum upgrades. Once you get tier one, you'll have access to the system plus the rewards. And as you progressively level up your followers, you'll eventually have chances of proccing these campaign missions, etc. and these rare missions. And these can give you the mounts. So you just want to be throwing your followers off on missions, leveling them up, and eventually proccing these missions, and going through the campaign missions. It's basically, you know, you just click the buttons and send them, there's nothing too complex about it. And eventually someone's going to make an add-on that's going to make it even easier. So if we're just throwing your followers in every so often, you'll eventually get some mounts for that, so I definitely think it's worth the time. You will also pick up a campaign mount fairly early on for Night Fae and Necrolords, this is going to be pretty much instantly in your introduction. And for Bastion and Venthyr, within a couple of chapters of your campaign, you'll get a mount as well. So yeah, there's a chunk of the Shadowlands mounts you're going to be able to pick up fairly effortlessly, honestly. A few will be able to pick up within a day, and then the rest you're going to be able to pick up within your first few weeks of playing. And then past that, you're going to be pre progressively working towards other mounts as well without really trying. You're going to be passively getting reputation and working on your Sanctum features and your campaign. And there's a bunch of mounts from that stuff too. So within a few months, you're going to have a big chunk of mounts added to your collection. Either way though, look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.